Hello everybody, and is everybody ready to go flying today? And so am I. We're going to go flying into the Rocky Mountains of America today. Let me tell you how I got to this point. I had a message from YouTuber who goes by the name of Scottster45. And he wrote me and he said, I just love your flights around the world, Father Dame. Well, thank you. And then he says, you make them fun to watch with plenty of caviar and champagne. Of course we do. <laughs> and he said, I was wondering if you could do a flight between Las Vegas, that's K-L-A-S, and Colorado Springs, which is K-C-O-S. And he says, that's in Colorado where he lives. Well, of course, of course we can. Now, hmm, I've flown in and out of Las Vegas many times. I've also flown in and out of Colorado Springs many times, but I've never flown from Las Vegas to Colorado Springs. I've always gone to Colorado Springs from other um places, other airports. So this will be the first time I will have flown this route. But why Colorado Springs, you ask? Well, I've been in out of Colorado Springs a number of times. I actually, it was in that region between Colorado Springs and over the other side into a state called Utah, very mountainous, because that's on the Rocky Mountains. And I did a lot of mountain flying training there. Uh, how to fly aircraft around and close to and around mountains and recognize wind and danger areas and what to avoid and what's safe and all the rest of it. So that was a lot of fun. And of course, flying in the Rocky Mountains is also very high. Now the airport the airport at uh, Colorado Springs is 6,187 feet. So it's quite high to begin with. Now we'll be landing at that altitude. The population of Colorado Springs is 471,000 thereabout. And it, well, it wasn't that big when I was there because that was back in the, oh, early 70s when I was going in and out and uh, of Colorado Springs and they had just started to do commercial flights I think in and out of there and they were building a terminal but I never used that terminal side at all but it's a uh, it's a lovely area it actually is it's a it's a it's a lovely area and if you're ever in Colorado go to Colorado Springs because the mountain scenery there is beautiful. And there is one area known as the um, Garden of the Gods. That's it, Garden of the Gods. It's just to the west of Colorado Springs. The rock formations there are just superb. Here's some uh, shots of that area, just to let you see how beautiful that scenery is and just how varied. I mean, I wasn't flying all the time in Colorado Springs, so there were, you know, opportunities to go out and hop around the mountains and do all of that sort of thing. In America, they call it rappelling, but in um, England, we call it abseiling. And that's going up and down mountains using ropes, and I did a bit of that, so. 
And of course, you have to get used to the thinner air at 6,100 and some odd feet. It's not exactly low, is it? So your lungs actually became acclimated. It was a lot of fun. I did enjoy the town. I enjoyed the people. I enjoyed, oh, there's some great places to eat there as well. But most of the time, I just enjoyed the beautiful Rocky Mountains. And the Garden of the Gods was one of them. So, we will go ahead and do that flight today. Now, I did... <laughs> I did a little research and uh, I found that Frontier Airlines flies. Frontier Airlines, they fly between Las Vegas and Colorado Springs. And it's flight 2018. 2018. Or you can look it up as F92018 on flight aware and that will bring up the history of the flights and we'll look at that in just a moment. I've got some great scenery and in fact I just loaded one scenery in but I had Las Vegas already in there. Now Las Vegas which is K-L-A-S airport scenery that is made by Fly Tampa. Very detailed and of course there are lots of options to tick in the boxes so that you can configure it. And I have all of the options ticked. So I don't know what kind of a frame hit that's going to be on my external screens. And the Colorado Springs, now that one I just got. I just got that from Sim Market and it was on sale. So I grabbed it while the grabbing was good. Uh, so the Colorado Springs KCOS Airport Scenery is made by FSX Scenery people. The FSX Scenery. And again, it is a delightful scenery, not nearly as detailed as the Fly Tampa one, so the frame rates are much better. Now, I also did a little bit of um, mischief. <laughs> And when I, I got this uh, short video clip, and I'll show this later on, okay? And it's of um, a flight briefing. You know those in-flight briefings when you're stuck in your seats and the cabin crew go down there and they say, and over here are the exits and in the case of and do this and the mask and everything else. You know, you get to hear that so often, it just goes in one ear and out the other. So, it turns out that um, Frontier Airlines, uh, this one particular flight, and I don't know where it originated, but uh, it was going to Colorado Springs. So, uh, they have a very different uh, safety briefing on board. And I'm going to play that. I'm going to show that uh, when we get to the appropriate time. After we push back and get the engine started, then, uh, then I'll play that. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And I hope that you enjoy it too. Right. We're going to go now into uh, the pre-flight room. You know, Scott, we have to get ourselves a flight plan. We have to look at the weather. We have to make sure we know what's coming up before we get there so that we can plan accordingly. So join me in pre-flight, okay? Well, here we are in Flight Aware and I'm looking at Frontier Airlines Flight 2018. Here you can see the d designators that you can Put this number in and it will bring this flight up. Now, I've gone into a historic flight simply because uh, that the next flight to leave isn't going to be for another couple of hours. So, this historic flight left Las Vegas at gate E9. The one that's leaving today is at Echo 10 uh, gate. 
and it left eight minutes early and arrived 16 minutes early. Well, not bad, but it arrived at gate one and we're going to try to do the gate 10 to gate one as well, just like this. Here's their route. Looking at the altitude, well, they did 37,000 feet, so I'm going to set 37,000 feet in as well. So that's going to be the route, and those are the, the stands that we'll use. Here's Windy. Here you can see Las Vegas, there's Henderson, and uh, you can see the wind is blowing pretty much from the southwest. However, it's saying wind is calm, visibility 10 statute miles, no clouds under 12,000 feet and VFR. Temperature is a warm 24 degrees. Oh, I wish we could have that here. Altimeter is 2988, just a tad below the 2992 standard. And it has been VFR for the past several hours. The terminal aerodrome forecast is wind 200 at 7 knots. So if they're planning on 200, we'll see what the runway might well be. Now here's the runways and there are four, let's see. 1 and 19, 1 and 19, 8 and 26, and right and left. Okay, so it looks like we'll be leaving on the 1 niner. That's my, my suspicion. So it'll be one of these two is, is what I think. Now, where is it that they park? Well, the gate... Echo 9 and Echo 10 is right next to each other, right in front of here. It's one of these. I don't know if I can zoom in. No, there's not enough detail on that. But that's where we will be originating from. And then it looks like we may have a little bit of a, a run to get up there to get to one of those runways. But that's where we will be at. Going over to Colorado Springs, the wind is sort of mixed at the moment and not exactly clear. Here you can see Colorado Springs up here to the South Fountain. You've got um, Fort Carson is down there and Pueblo down here, Canyon City. And all of the great mountains are all around here. This, this area here, of course, is all the Rockies. And it's saying that the wind is 10 degrees at 5 knots, visibility 10 statute miles, few clouds at 9,000 feet. Now, remember, we're already starting out at 6,000 feet, so this is going to be a, a few feet above us. Broken at 19,000 feet, temperature 9. Quite chilly there. Altimeter 3021. Let's have a look at the runways. Uh, which one are we likely to come in on? Good question here. My suspicion is that we'll be probably on this one or this one coming in. Um, of course, I don't know if that's going to be the case, but that's, that's my suspicion. But the gate that we'll be using, now this right here, at, right at this point, this is gate number one. So we're going to try to pull into that stand and use that one as our destination. All right, let's go into sim brief and let's see what we are assigned here. So we are, of course, Ryanair and we are 186. And we're departing from KLAS and we're going to go to KCOS. Oh, and Denver is our alternate should things go pear-shaped. 
and here is the designator for the aircraft type so that SimBrief knows all the information and can then calculate fuel burn, fuel requirements, etc. Profile is six. There's our registration. It's saying schedule flight time is one hour 55. That's gate to gate or block to block, door to door. Departure, they're saying, is 26 right, arrival on 17 left. Okay, we can handle that. For altitude, we're going to put in 370, just like the previous one. And we are full of passengers. Everybody wants to fly with us because we have one ton of what? That's right. Caviar and champagne. Yes. <laughs> And there is our route, and it says we are 594 nautical miles for the trip. And there it is, there's our route. Out Las Vegas, straight across. There's the Rockies all the way through here. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. And up here is Cheyenne, Denver, Colorado Springs. There's Santa Fe and Albuquerque down here, Flagstaff, Salt Lake City, Elko, all of these great places. Been to all of those airports. Anyway, Denver, should things go pear-shaped, there's the information. And the altitude at Denver is 5,434 feet, so just a little bit lower than Colorado Springs. Okay. It looks like it'll be a nice straight run and we'll, shouldn't have any problems. All right, let's save this flight and let's generate the flight plan. All right, here's the summary. There's our airline, flight number, aircraft type, origination, destination, alternate, and there's our cruise. Airtime is Planned at 1.26, 1 hour, 26 minutes. There's the block fuel required. And there's our route. Dispatcher has no remarks. And going down here, let's look at this. Ryanair 186, that is us. The F370 is our flight cruising altitude. And this is the flight route. Kden, Denver is our alternate should things go upside down. We'll need to know we are cost index six. We'll need to know the average wind to put that into the information. Block fuel, we'll need to make sure we have 7,256 kilograms of fuel. That's pretty much 7.3 metric tons. And at the prices of fuel today, that would be quite a bit. I hope you've got a credit card. <laughs> Reserves, 2,440, that's 2.4. Trip and taxi, 4,135. So quite a bit of fuel today. And no tankering recommended. Here is the, the route. And I'll post this in the description box below the video. Now we'll need to know this information right here for the descent. We'll need to know the wind speed and direction at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. We'll need to know it at 15,000 feet at 150 flight level. And at flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Here is the wind information for our journey today and as luck would have it, look at this, we have tailwinds. Look at that. Now this is for flight level 390 which is 2,000 feet above us but it should be pretty much the same and that is not bad at all. I like tailwinds. I've got nothing against tailwinds at all. And right there is the vertical profile. So you can see we depart from Las Vegas and climb all the way to the top of climb. 
37,000 feet, go across, and then straight down into Colorado Springs. And look at all of this. All of these, this is the profile of the mountains that we're going to be crossing. And here you can see we've got good tailwinds all the way along. This dotted line up here, this is the tropopause. Now, we're not going to be going anywhere near that today, so it's not going to affect us. All right, let's go into Navigraph Charts. All right, here we go. We click Flights, New Flights, from Simbrief, and we bring the one in we just made. Click on the originating airport, open the charts list. We need to know the airport information. And this is the one that we need because we're going to be parked right about here at Terminal 3 and we'll be here at either 9 or 10. If we can get it, we'll get 10. So that's where we will actually start out. So the coordinates are right there in when we need to put that in for our location. We're going to be using this departure, Sid. Uh, this is the, I don't know how you pronounce that, Gidget 2 departure. So we'll be making this swing around and going over here to the Gidget web uh, waypoint and then all the way along. So we'll add that to the information at the bottom. So those, those charts are then readily available for us right there. Going over to our destination, we open up the charts list. We'll need the airport parking spots and coordinates. And we will be coming in down here. This is the terminal right down here. So, got that pinned. We'll be using this for our arrival. So we'll pin that and we'll be using the 17 left. So uh, let's look for ILS, ILS runway 17 left category two. That will be us. And there it is. There's our basic information that we're going to need. We need to know ATIS. There's the approach. 119.9 is the tower. There's ground frequency. We'll need to know the localizer frequency because that has the glide slope information on it. It says the final approach course is 172. And looking here, the intermediate fix is Mogal. And the Initial approach fix is Adani right here. That's where we'll try to make our approach. We'll do the swing around and come down here. We'll put the Black Forest VOR into VOR number two for our reference, just in case we may need it. We'll use a radio altimeter of 105 feet for our decision height. It says on a missed approach, climb to 7,200, then climbing left, turn to 9,000 on 020 heading and outbound, outbound on the BRK, the Black Forest VOR. So that's the reason why we need to have that because we'll need to intercept the 091 uh, radial to go to this in order to make another approach should things not work out on the first time. Airport elevation is 6,187 feet. Transition level in the United States is flight level 180. Transition altitude is also 18,000 feet. 
So there's the route that we will be taking to come in and make our approach and landing onto that, la uh, that runway. At Mogo, it is calling for 10,000 feet and then down to 9,000 feet. And then at this point, then 8,700 and then down the glide slope on heading of 172 to make our landing. Close this up, close that, and clean everything up. So there's our route. Okay, if you're ready, then let's go into the cockpit and get things started. Hello, Scott. Do come on in and welcome to Ryanair 186. I'm delighted you are here today because we are going to fly from Las Vegas, where we are now, to your hometown where you live in Colorado Springs. So let me show you what we have right here. Looking over on the left, you can see there's quite a bit of traffic going out there. I'm presuming that's the motorway. And you can see that there are some snow-capped mountains in the background. But look at all the detail of the airport scenery here. Really is quite, quite good. And you can see through the glass into the concourse, there's the village pub. And we are at stand Echo 10. Echo 10, one zero. And all the way over there to the right. Look at the extraordinary detail. Isn't that grand? Wow, well impressed. Now, I made sure that we had the fuel on board. Everything is on board. We got the fuel. We have 7,256 kilograms of fuel on board. <laughs> wow. And... Um, we're all set to go. The gates, uh, the door is open, the stairs are down, and our self-loading cargo will be coming out in just a minute. But we are at stand Echo 10 right here at Las Vegas, and the weather is looking very good. I have Active Sky running, and with all of the detail, I'm using 14, 15, between 14 and 15 frames per second, and I have three large monitors all running at 4K capacity. So that's ultra high definition. First thing then we do is we turn on the battery, check that we have enough bolts, turn on the fuel pumps, and then we start the APU. This is what we're looking at. Now the low oil pressure light has come on, which is good. We'll be looking now for this to start to spin up. There it goes. Look at that. This is a one-to-one -one representation, recreation of a real 737 forward overhead. This one is made by Act uh, open cockpits and it's really really good the low oil pressure went out and the engine gas temperature is going to drop down at the moment I'm not showing any volts I have this set to APU generator but I'm looking for this to stabilize and then this light to come on there it is so click that on and now we have 115 volts with which to get everything cranked up in the cockpit. How about that? So I'm going to turn on the IRS, which is our navigation system. Turn on the galley. 
up the emergency exit lights, smoking and seatbelt signs, and then we turn on the left and the right window heat. We'll leave the probes off for the moment. There's the electrical hydraulic pumps, and as I said, the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down on the side. And yes, there they are. There's our self-loading cargo getting ready to climb the stairs. So to get everything set, I need to now go over here and turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, and now the packs. And listen, there they are. We now have air conditioning running into the main cabin because it's a warm day out here in Las Vegas. Outside air temperature right now is 24 degrees, which is very pleasant indeed. It's about the same temperature as my pal in Italy right now. And then the last thing I'm going to do is turn on the steady light so that the ground crews know that we're in here and we are getting ourselves organized. Right, the next thing we're going to do now is we need to program the FMC. And we check that the air rack is in date and we also check that the program is showing no errors. We go to position initialization and we are at KLAS, so KLAS, and we are at gate E10. Let's see if it's in here. So E10. And it is. And it matches exactly. That's the correct GPS uh, coordinates for gate E10. So I'm going to press that so it goes into the temporary, then transfer it from the temporary into that. Now our GPS is set. Now we go to route, and here we take the route directly from our flight plan. Origin, of course, is KLAS, and we're going to go to KCOS. That, of course, is Colorado Springs. We are Ryanair, which is RYR, and we are number 186. The scourge of the air, tra air traffic control. <laughs> then we go to next page. And our first waypoint is Tucker. So T-U-K-R-R. -R. And I put that up in there. Then the next waypoint is DVC. So D, B, C, and put that in. Then we take the Juliet 146 route. So Juliet 146. And that will take us to HBU. HBU. And that is it. So now we activate that and execute. Now we go into fix, we need to put a fix, the fixed lines around our destination airport. And that of course is KCOS. And we need a 4 mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle. And we need a 30 mile circle. Now we go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level, do you remember that? That's right, it's 180. Put that in. Then we need the information for flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Altimeter at our destination is 1024. Put that in there. And then we put the values in for these three flight levels. So at 200, it is 234 at 19. So 234 at 19, put that in. At 150, it is 238 at 15. So 238 at 15. 
and at 10,000 feet it is 213 at 12, 213 at 12. And we put that in there and execute that. Go to departures and arrivals, go to departures. Now we have to listen to ATIS to get the current conditions for the airport. And the ATIS frequency here is 132 decimal 4. So 132 decimal 4. Matt Curran International Airport Information Papa 2152 Zulu Wing Car Visibility Greater than 20 miles Sky Condition Clear Temperature 24 Dew Point 13 Altimeter 1013 Landing and Departing Runway 8 Right Runway 8 Left Runway 7 Right Runway 7 Center Runway 7 Left Runway 6 Runway 5 Runway 4 Runway 3 Runway 2 Runway 1 Left and Runway 1 Right VFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft read back hold short instructions Advise controller on initial contact you have Papa well, there's a lot of runways that are open, and I'm not sure now which one we're going to be assigned. So I'd better request an IFR clearance, and then get our clearance to push back, so that we know which runway we're actually going to be using for departure. We thought it was going to be uh, runway 26 right, and that may not be the case at all. So let's find out. So I'm going to request our IFR clearance right now. Las Vegas clearance delivery, Ryanair 186 IFR 2, City of Colorado Springs, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Hotel Bravo Uniform Airport as file. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain. 11,000 departure frequency as 125.025 squat 0465. Ryanair 186 cleared to Hotel Bravo Uniform Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 11,000. Departure on 125.025. Squawk 0465. Ryanair 186 redback correct. Contact ground on 121.1. Okay, so we'll go to Las Vegas ground on 121.1 and request taxi to the runway they want us to use. Las Vegas ground, Ryanair 186, we're Quebec, ready to taxi, IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 8 left, using taxiway, Charlie 5, Charlie Bravo 7, Bravo Foxtrot, contact tower on 119er, point niner, when ready. Taxiing, hold short, runway 8, left, via taxiway, Charlie 5, Charlie Bravo 7, Bravo Foxtrot, Ryanair 186. Well, instead of going in that direction to get to 26 right, we now have to go into that direction in order to get to runway 8 left. How about that? So they've changed, the wind direction has changed on us, and that does happen, you know. Remember, when we looked at the weather, it said wind was calm, so anything can happen. So we'll have to now enlarge that and... Okay, I've got my chart all set up here. So we're going to be using 8 left. So 8 left. So we'll just be taking the 8 left and not worrying about a standard instrument departure since we're going to go pretty much straight out. So execute that. Go to departures and arrivals and go to our destination. And we're still planning, if nothing goes wrong, to come in on 17 left. So I'm going to put ILS 17 left in there. And we'll be using the, the Dubry 5 arrival. And transition will be HBU. And the Dani right over there. So execute that. Now we go to legs and let's have a look and see whether the flight plan works. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I need to change this and go from map to plan. So click on that and then it changes this screen to look like this. Now I'm going to go through each of the steps and let's see what happens. There's the HBU 
flood. There's the 30 mile circle that we put in. There's the 10 mile circle. Now, this is where we need to make some changes here. We're not going to go to the BRK. Instead, we're going to go straight to Adani. So, Adani to in place of the BRK and put that there. Now, you see what happened? It put it all the way up in order to make a perfect approach and arrival into our destination. So going through each of the steps, there's the, there's the final curve coming in now and right down onto final and landing on runway 17 left. So there's the 10 mile circle and there's the 4 mile circle. Okay, got that all done. Now I'm going to switch back to map and I'm going to turn the weather on on this side. Double click this to bring on the data. I'm going to put terrain on your side. That's going to be very important. Lots of mountains we have to avoid. And double click the data for you. And then I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen by other traffic in the area. Now I need to make some changes up here. So we'll go ahead and finish the flight plan. Go to route, perform the initialization. We have reserves of 2,440, which is 2.4. We have trip and taxi, which is 4,135. That comes to 6,575 or 6.6. .6. 6.6 .6 is our plan, 2.4 is our reserves, cost index is 6, cruise altitude is 370, cruise wind, that's the average wind, is 248 at 32, 248 at 32. Transition altitude is 180, again over there. Now I double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything for us that we need and execute that. And one limit. We'll take the 24 degrees, so slash 24 and put that in. It goes into bold. We're not going to bother with the D rates or anything like that go to takeoff we're going to go with flaps 10 I'm going to double click this to get the center of gravity and the value for the trim wheel one click on each of these gives us V1 V2 and rotation speed okay and now I'm going to put in our departure course here because that's important the, if we're leaving on 8 left, that is 79 degrees, so I'm going to put 79 degrees in here. I'm going to put 79 degrees in this for our departure heading as well. And I'll do yours too, if that's alright, Scott. Okay, 79 degrees over here. Altitude, we've been cleared to 11,000 feet, so I'll put 11,000 feet in that. The max speed is 145 for liftoff, so I'll put 145 in this. All right. Now, I'm going to flight director on, flight director on, VNAV, LNAV, and we have a good flight plan, so click on that, and we can arm the... Auto throttle, VOR1, VOR2, VOR1, VOR2. And the localizer is 109.1. And the Black Forest VOR is 112.5. All right, we have the frequencies are in. That's good. All right, good enough. Well, our self loading cargo has all boarded, so. We'll bring up the stairs, close the door, 
I'm now going to turn on the yaw damper and the flight continuity light went out I'm going to turn this to RTO now it's time to do a checklist so fuel is correct windows all locked both seatbelt signs are on door lights are all out MCP is programmed and set takeoff thrust bugs are done takeoff speeds are completed CDU pre-flight is done now we will now we will back out put our nose to the left and our tail to the right and anti-collision light is now going on and I'm going to set the pressurization our cruising altitude today is 37,000 feet and our landing altitude do you remember what that is that's right 6187 so let's get 6000 uh, in this spin it up it's actually close to 6200 so because these are in increments of 50 feet so 6200 is our landing altitude let's ask the nice people for a, a pushback now which engine would you like to start first the left engine or the right engine it's your choice which one would you like number one and number two you, you'd like to start number one first okay so I'm going to switch then the switch up here to generator one to look for the voltage coming from the left engine when it gets started so adjust the seats and the Navigraph charts are now available at the bottom right here so you can see where we are at, that's the red dot in the upper part of terminal 3 and you can see where we've got to go to get to runway 8 left Okay, let's ask them to give us a push back and start. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for push and start. Tail to the right. Copy that. Ready for push tail right. Release burn brake, please. Parking brake is off. Ladies and gentlemen, please clear the aisle so that we can Brakes see released. to reverse. Right, I'm turning the air conditioning off now so that we can put the energy towards the... Brakes released, here we go. And I'm switching to engine number one. Over here, the start valve has opened. The engines are starting to spin up. N2 is coming up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. And it's coming up. 24. Now I'm bringing in the fuel. The next I'm looking for now is the engine gas temperature to rise. There it is, looking very good. Getting a good start there. And for the low oil pressure light to go out. And we are getting a good start. Oh, beautiful scenery. There, the engines have caught. And I'm now looking for 115 volts up here. There it is. Switching now to engine number two for start. The start valve has opened on engine two. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. Coming up. There it is. Fuel going in. I'm now going to look for the parking brake is set. Now I'm looking for the engine Brake's gas set. temperature to rise, and it is. Looking now for the oil low pressure light to go out, and it has. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. You know they're such nice people on the ground, aren't they?
Okay, everything is looking good. So, after start, the generators are on. Probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti ice not required at the moment. Isolation valve is correct. Engine start levers idle, detent. Flight deck door closed and locked. And turning on the air conditioning. Now I need to turn on, go to the main engines and turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. We're now running purely on main engines. So recall, check, flight controls, check, flaps, green light, 10. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake, RTO is correct. Speed brake lever down, detent, check. Ground equipment is all clear. So, since the ground equipment is clear, I can turn on now the taxi lights and we'll make our way out towards the... Now we get to see quite a bit more. Oh, and there's kamikazes. The kamikazes are already out in force. Looks like over there, there's an aircraft coming in to land. So we're going to be going out there to make our departure. Plenty of aircraft here. There's the tower. Smile and say nice things. And there's the terminal building that we just departed from. Now, one of the other things that I spotted, and <laughs> you will like this, right now is when the cabin crew are supposed to perform the safety briefing but you know what everybody ignores that they just it goes in one ear and out the other but I found out that Frontier Airlines that's the one that we're following today they have a really interesting briefing so listen to the let's listen to the briefing as we make our way to the active runway okay if you do decide to leave, you will not be allowed access back on board and parachutes are not included. <laughs> Here at Frontier Airlines, we like to keep up with all the latest fashion trends. In the event that this flight becomes a cruise, all of you lucky people get your own itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow falcon dot bikinis beneath your seat. <laughs> Minus the itsy bitsy teeny weeny and you get no polka dots. Once you're outside the aircraft, hold on sharply on the red tab that's on the front. Or for those of you who love to make life difficult, you can blow into that red tube near your shoulder to blow. <laughs> I mean inflate. The beautiful bikini is equipped with a water-activated light. How in the world that works, I have no idea. So if you figure it out, please do let me know. And if by chance yours does not inflate, well, grab your neighbor and hold on for dear life. The location and use of life vests for your child that shows the most potential is located in that safety information card. If needed due to a loss of cabin pressure, four oxygen masks will drop from a compartment over your head. Ignore those and grab your nearest flight attendant to get some air. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm so lonely. <laughs> Once you stop screaming, place that mask over your nose and your mouth. To adjust, pull on the elastic tabs on either side. Make sure to adjust your own mask before assisting your favorite child, another passenger, or your husband who's definitely screaming louder than you are. And let's be honest, only those of you that pay the extra $49.99 get any oxygen. <laughs> Smoking of any kind is not allowed on the aircraft. Unless you're like me and you're smoking hot. <laughs> Thank you so much for your attention. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight to Colorado Springs. And for those of you who didn't give us your full attention, good luck. <laughs> Well, what did you think of that? <laughs> I'll bet you, you won't forget that briefing, will you? <laughs> all right, let's go over here and get uh, out of the way of all these kamikazes.
beautiful weather today absolutely beautiful weather and this is a, a motorway right here and it's quite busy Yes, it's definitely that runway that's in operation. There's aircraft landing on it. Well, we've got a kamikaze getting ready to do a number on us. Don't you dare. Don't you... Look at that. They pay absolutely no attention to us. None at all. My goodness me. Right, well, we've got to turn here. So, Scott... Stick your hand out while we make the turn, would you please? <laughs> now this is the Charlie taxiway, so we've got to go down this one. Well, my frame rate has dropped quite a bit because of all of the extra detail that you can see out here. I'm now down to nine, 10, nine or 10 frames per second. Not particularly good, but then again, I have a lot of detail. There's a lot of aircraft moving around, a lot of kamikazes, and of course, Las Vegas itself is not exactly um, small in pixels because all of those lights and activities of all of the casinos and they're all out there there's what aircraft coming in to land Beautiful scenery though, the Bellagio Pyramid Casino and everything is all out there, beautiful detail, my gracious, the detail is extraordinary. Uh oh, we've got ourselves a kamikaze coming straight for us, go on, get out of it, go on, buzz off. Not a chance, look at that. It's a wonder we're able to fly, you know. Oh, we're coming up on the Bravo 6 and then we need to take this all the way it's a very busy airport is Las Vegas the number of people who come here all in hopes of breaking the bank are <laughs> enormous numbers but you know the house always wins always Yeah, I've got some stutter. Has to do with the frame rate, I'm afraid. 
are now we're 12, 12 frames. We're doing a little bit better. This is a very, very dense, detailed airport scenery. Well, there's an aircraft I hope isn't going to come and decide to challenge us to a chicken run. Got one coming in to land. Plenty of aircraft flying overhead. That's the VOR for Las Vegas right there. That's what the VOR looks like. Now up ahead I've got to cross over one of the runways which uh, may be rather interesting. What does it say I've got to do? An MB7BF. Okay. Alright, just continue down here. Cross over the runway the best I can. That's coming up. Make sure there's nothing coming. Would be very awkward if, we, if there was. This is the one that left 19 right. Very, very detailed indeed, very detailed. And cross over this one and then turn left to go to the, the threshold. All clear, yeah, all clear. And swing around to the left. That's the one, box drop, good, yeah, we're okay. And 
here we are coming up into the the threshold all right okay so let's tune in to the tower and get our clearance Las Vegas Tower, Ryanair 186 at runway 8 left, ready for takeoff, IFR2 Hotel Bravo Uniform. Ryanair 186 cleared for takeoff, runway 8 left. Cleared for takeoff, runway 8 left. Ryanair right, we are cleared for takeoff, so engine briefing good, bleeds are on check. Engine start switches are now going to continuous, and all lights are going on. Attendance secure for takeoff, and the position light is now going on steady. And over here, starting the clock. All right, everything is looking good. So let's move out into position. Las Vegas Tower, Pacifica 5202 is 1 1 mile east inbound visual runway 26 left approach. Pacifica 5202, Las Vegas Tower, make straight in, runway 26 left, altimeter 1013. Make straight in, runway 26 left, Pacifica 5202. Okay, everything looks okay. We're lined up, let's advance the power. And took a button, and we're rolling. What is that? Are they taking off towards us? Look at that. Rotate. Rotate. V2. All right, positive rate. Gear is up. And we are climbing out. Release to go to work. Vegas Tower, orbit 53 minor 5 is 25 miles east, inbound visual runway 26 left. Traffic, traffic. Orbit 53 minor 5, Las Vegas Tower, make straight in, runway 26 left, altimeter 1013. Fly straight in, runway 26 left, orbit 53 uh, minor 5. This really is crazy. Alright, let's get up. a very interesting departure I mean I don't know if you realized it but we were taking off on runway 8 left but they would had somebody taking off on the other side of the runway directly towards us so I uh, can't figure them out but that's what we actually had anyway we're now climbing out 
Our frame rate has increased to 17, so we're doing much better with the frame rate. And uh, we're about an hour and a half from your hometown of Colorado Springs. So in the meantime, champagne and caviar is being served in the main cabin. So go ahead, pop in there and load up. And then I'll give you a shout when we're on downwind to land at Colorado Springs, okay? I'll see you in about an hour and a bit, okay? Did you get enough to drink and did you get enough caviar? Oh, good, I'm glad to hear it. And I better tell you where we are. We are have to make some changes. Now, what happened was, we were thinking we were going to be landing on one runway, 17 left, and now they've changed it. The weather has picked up and changed the runway, so now, we are going to go on runway 35. Initially, they cleared us to 35 left, but I asked for 35 right because that would be closer to the parking area. So now we are cleared to runway 35 right for a landing at Colorado Springs. We are just approaching the flood waypoint and we are descending a little bit here. We've already got our clearance to come in for 35 right. So now we just need to go up to Fisher, make a left turn, come down in and then it will be a straight in landing to um, 35 right at Colorado Springs. So right now we are on base for landing at Colorado Springs. Make sense? Ha, okay. Anyway, I'm turning on the, the lights, the fasten seatbelt signs are on, attendance, are preparing now for landing. They're picking up all the glasses and the champagne and all the unused caviar and everything else. You know how that goes. So we are... There you can see the 30 mile line right there 
and we had just we just went into it and then went out of it so we're coming back into it now and going to Fisher where we will make our left turn to intercept the final so I've got it all set up on here and uh, our final now will be on a heading of 352 degrees we have to descend to 8100 intercept the glide slope and then come in for a <coughs> perfect landing <laughs> at Colorado Springs now as I said I've made lots of landings at uh, Uh, at Colorado Springs but never in anything this big not at all so we're not doing too bad we're on course to land and I think what I'm going to do in a moment here is slow ourselves up um, we're going to go up here and then make a left to intercept so uh, Fisher is our next waypoint We're doing 220 knots at the moment, which is not bad. I have the anti-skid set for number three. Right, going to go to flaps one. Let's see if we can reduce our speed a little bit. and coming down a little bit here you can see on the chart that we are getting ready to make a left turn and then We'll go on up to Fallow, which is the intermediate fix, and then we're online to land directly on runway 35. Okay, going to flaps 5, and we're making our turn. I don't have the runway in sight yet, but it's out there. The weather is a little changeable too. Here we are, we're now coming around, we're now on final, we're pretty much on a long final. Somewhere out there is the airport, can't see it yet. But we're coming up now to follow and that's when we need to be at 8100 feet.
I should have my phone off, but it's always a little tricky. Okay, I'm, I've got that adjusted. 352 degrees is our final. And we need to intercept that. We're coming up on that interception point. We're on course to land. We're descending at a good good rate. Everything looks like it's on track. When we get past Fallu, that's when we will make our, uh, we'll cross the 10 mile line and then we'll go to flaps 10 at that point. Right, we are 14 DME miles from the airport and Ah, I have the airport in sight, it's over, over to our right but we are on course to coming in. There we go, we're looking okay. Now we're making our final course change 352 degrees and coming in there's the runway I have the runway in sight looking good there's the airport directly ahead oh and we have rain. We've run into some foul weather. What's the temperature? We are plus 19 degrees, so we're okay. We do not need anti-ice. We're fine on that. Coming down onto our altitude. All right, we are on the localizer we are on final to land we're on the localizer i can see two white two red and in a moment we'll be on the glide slope. Clear to land runway three five right clear to land runway three five right Ryanair one eight six we have our landing instructions engines going on crew secure for landing and Everything is set. 352, all good on there. And right, going to gear down, flaps down. And locking onto the localizer. 2500. 2500, check. And we're on course. Resetting this in case of a missed approach. Right. Okay, well, it looks like we're all good to go. You think I should do it? What do you think? 
have you had enough to drink so that you won't notice anything? Oh, good. In that case then, here we go. I have control. <laughs> oh yeah. And it's a little bit unsteady outside. We're descending very nicely, we're doing okay. Too white, too red, looking good. Five hundred. Five hundred, check. Four hundred. Green lights, everything is looking good. Three hundred. 300, we're on course. Approaching minimums. Minimums. We Light are committed slope. to land. Light slope. Light, light slope. 20. 10. And we are down. Reverse thrusters are on. bit of a crosswind there. I'm going to try to pull off on this intersection right here. Okay, we will do exactly that. Look at the weather. Wow. It was lovely blue skies when we took off from Las Vegas, but look at it here. This is really something else. What do you think? Good grief. My, they're very insistent, aren't they? Well, we'll turn here. I'm not going to stick my hand out, it's raining. Ah. Ryanair 186, contact ground on 121.7. 121.7, Ryanair 186. Alright, I'm going to stop here and clean up. So, all switches are going off. And those lights are off, starting the APU. Okay, engine start switches are off. Crew is released to go to work. And okay, everything's good, cleaned up, ready to go. Now then, so we need to go down there and then we turn in on November. And that will bring us into our parking area. Uh, the frame rate right now is 14.15. But there's a lot of activity with the weather and that is having an impact on the frame rate. This airport scenery is made by FSX Scenery. Really a delightful, delightful scenery. It's really very good, very detailed. I'm now 18, 18 frames per second, which is not bad. Look at it, look at it coming down, my goodness me.
This really is some surprising weather. So we'll continue on this until we get to the November intersection. Beautiful terrain around here. Look at all the mountains, the Rocky Mountains there. Look at all of that. Isn't that beautiful? Now this is the mic turn off. We don't want this one. We want the one afterwards, the November. We'll be turning in on the next one here and then going over to our left and we'll try to find stand at number one which is what the previous Frontier Airlines came in on. Yeah, it says November. This is the November one. So we turn down here. Pretty tight turn. And then we need to go to the right and then go down and find number one, which is at the far side. Beautiful detail if it just wasn't pouring down with rain. Right, I'm going to go down here. Now, number one should be at the corner down there. That's that's the one that we saw. Little tricky trying to keep on the yellow line. Okay, they've got cones over there. Ah, oh, red cones everywhere. But it's not this one. And not that one. It should be, should be the very last one. So we'll make that last turn and that should bring us right down into stand number one. Now that's it, that's stand number one. Here we go. Coming up and almost there and right there we are. Parking brake is on. Okay. And right. Shut down. Lights are off. Tcas is off. 
and all that is off, all this is off. All right, your damper off, IRS is off. Right, the stairs and the doors are going down. And all right, and probes are off. Electrical is off. And everything is down. Everybody's going off. Everybody's looking good. Right, so all is set. So Fuel off, APU off, and battery off. Shutdown is complete. Wow, look at all of this. This is a ton of rain coming down here. I should show you this. Detail of this airport scenery is pretty good, you know. I'm looking out here to the left. You can see the detail of the vehicles, but most of all, you can see the rain coming down. Now, I've never been into the new airport or terminal building at all, because that's this is all new stuff for me. They were just building uh, something when I was here the last time, but that was in the early 70s, long time ago. But beautiful detail. And this, of course, is Colorado Springs, K-C-O-S, airport scenery, and it is made by FSX Scenery. FSX Scenery. Lovely job. Ha! But look at the weather. That, of course, is active sky, and that's pretty accurate right now. Right, Scott? Welcome to your home. I'm glad you asked me to come. It's been quite a while that I've been here, but it was an interesting flight. We had a good flight. Everything went well, nice and smooth until we started to descend and run into all this bad weather. But thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for inviting me to Colorado. And I will see you on another flight. And everyone else, take care. And be good, and I'll see you on another flight of Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.